Welcome to the Practice Norwegian podcast and episode 16 on the Basic Grammar series. So this is episode 16 out of just 20, and then you have all of the grammar for the basic level, but it's also more or less all of the grammar for the Norwegian language. So the topic of today is the concept of sin, which means his own, her own, or their own. It's a little bit complicated because you have to analyze the sentence and see the subject and the object and the relationship between them. But once you know the, the technique here, you can apply it and it's it's always consistent. So first, just an example. If you say in Norwegian, han hente bilen sin, it means he is picking up his own car. If you say han hente bilen hans, he's picking up someone else's car. So in English, you would just say if he picks up his car, you don't know if it's his own or somebody else's. In Norwegian, you have two different concepts for this. But then you also have to check who is the subject? So if the subject is a he or she or they, han, hun, eller de, and the object belongs to them, you would use the concept of sin. So also, so that's one part, is to know when to use the sin as a concept. The second part is which ending to put on sin, because it follows the patterns of uh, your or my stuff, like min or din. So the four endings are sin, si, sit, and sin. So, for an example, han legger sønnen sin, he puts his own uh, his own uh, son to bed. Han er på øya si, he's on his own island. Han vasker huset sitt, he's washing his own house. Han mister nøklene sine, he is losing his own keys. So now first, just, just for the ending part, and we're always going to use sin in the following example. So you can try to fill in the gap. If you say, hun hente jakka, and then the right version of sin. So you can see hun hente jakka. A means it's a female. And the female version is C. Yes, it's like me and D. Hun hente jakka C. And then han tømmer glasse. He is emptying his own glass. Glasse is a neutral. Glasset, you, you write it glasset. That's a neutral. So then han tømmer glasse. Sit with a T. Double T at the end, sit. And then, hun fyller koppen. She is filling her own cup. Kopp en, en means it's a male. So then, the version of sin would be... Mm -hmm, good. Hun fyller koppen sin. And then, for the plurals, de henter jackene. They are uh, grabbing or fetching or picking up their own jackets. De henter jackene sine. Good. So that is the part of the four different endings. And now back to when you will use the sin concept. And to try to just state the rule here as succinct as possible, if the subject in the sentence is a third person, meaning if the subject is he or she or they, and the object of the sentence belong to them, you would use the sin concept. And you would have the ending on the sin according to what the object is. So if uh, so that is the rule, so another way of putting this is like you never use sin as the subject, for example. It all, it's only for the object if the object belongs to the subject and the subject is a third person. Okay, so some examples with sentences. Han hente bilen, he picks up uh, the car and then which is his own so his own car then you have to say han hente bilen sin yes and then he's picking up a friend's car instead han hente bilen mm -hmm. hans because the friend's car doesn't belong to the subject like he in the sentence so then you do as we did before putting hans for his like, uh, hans, hennes, deres is the normal possessives. So which you have to use when you don't, with the sin condition for sin doesn't apply. Okay, and now you have two major traps for when it f uh, feels like you should use sin, but you don't. And the first one is you just have to keep track of who is the subject. So for example, han reiser på tur med kona, 
and then you want to say he's going on a trip with his own wife. Han reiser på tur med kona. Si. Because kona, female, si. In this sentence, she belongs to the subject, he. Therefore, you have to use the sin concept. But the similar sentence is han, so he and his wife go on a trip. Han och kona. And then you have to use hans. Han och kona hans reiser på tur sammen. Because he and his wife are both the subject. So this is one of two big, big traps that is very common to, to not seeing in the beginning. Han och kona hans reiser på tur sammen. The other is if you have a subclass, you have to start over and look at the subclass. What is the subject and the object in the subclass? So if you say, han säger att kona, so he says that his wife is home today. So you can think, okay, he is the subject, his wife is the object. Then you can say, han tänker att kona si. But in the subclass, after att you get the subclass, so the subclass is just, his wife is home today. And in the subclass, she is the subject. You never use sin on the subject. So then you get, han säger att kona hans är hemma idag. And another one, han spør fordi kona, gap, vil reise til Paris. So he's asking because his wife wants to go to Paris. You can, it could feel like the same thing that he is the subject in the beginning and that his wife is the object belongs to him. But you have fordi and then you get a subclass. And in the subclass you just have his wife wants to go to Paris. So she's the subject in the subclass. So then you get han spør fordi kona hans vil reise til Paris. But then if you say, if you just change a few words in the sentence, you can get like, he wants to go to Paris with his wife. Then we're back to like, he is the subject in the sentence. She has the object function and belonging to, to the subject. So, han skal til Paris med kona si. So, this might feel a little bit confusing in the beginning, but once you've done it a few times, you just have it clear before you. Like in the, in the normal sentence or in the subclass, you have to look at subject, object, and just watch out for if you have many in the subject position or you have to start that you have a blank page when you see the subclass. So if you then say uh, that he says that he will go with his wife, han säger att han ska reise med kona, there's a gap. Here you have han säger att, you get a subclass, and here the subclass is att han ska reise med kona. So here you have another han in the subclass, and then you get kona si. Han säger att han ska reise med kona si, because you have both the subject and the object in the subclass. Okay, so that's all the grammar for like how like when to use the sin concept and finding the right ending. So to repeat the grammar of it, if the subject is he, she, or they, and the object belongs to the subject, you, have used the, you will use the sin concept. That's the requirement. And there's no way around this. There's no way of um, kind of thinking that it's his or her own uh, car or uh, journey or, or a trip because it, it has to be the structure in the sentence has to be accordingly that he and or like he or she or they subject, object belongs to them. Okay, so now we're going to have... At the end here, a long sentence with seven gaps, which is testing all the things we said now with the normal conditions, the um, subclass, and watch out for who is the subject. Okay, so first, so he says, uh, he picks up his car and says that his car is the best in the world. So first, he picks up his car, han hente bilen. So if you guess now, I can help on the first two gaps. So he picks up his own car. He is the subject. His own car is the object. So there we have the condition fulfilled. And then you use the sin concept. And then the object is bilen. It's a male. So then you use the sin. Han hente bilen sin. And then, and says that. So then you get a subclass. At his car is the best in the world. Even if it's his own car is the best in the world, the car is still the subject in the subclass. So then you have to say, bilen hans er verdens beste. 
and next one och att vännerna gap är er helt enige and that his friends are fully agreeing so if you see at the subclass his friends are agreeing so then vännerna hans because they are the subject vännerna hans är er helt enige but when he asks his wife men när han spör kona and the gap so when he asks and then the wife then he is the subject the wife is the object then you use the sin concept men när han spör kona si ser hon att bilen the gap is much nicer than the car uh, than his car the car belonging to him so she says that and then you have her car is nicer than his car this is a bit of just like a comparison sentence so you don't have really a subject and an object there's no verb here that is saying that one one thing is is doing something with an object so then you then you don't know <laughs> what's the subject and object but they're not the subject and object and then you know you're not going to use the sin concept so then just like who see that bilen hennes är mycket finare än bilen hans and the last part or att hon liker bilen gap best and that she likes her own car best so you have or at then you get a subclass she likes her own car best now we're back to a clear straightforward example she likes her car her own car hun liker bilen sin best okay so it's a bit complicated grammar and it takes a bit of training to do this a few times but once you get uh, uh, just the habit of looking at the subject and object, you get more and more the feeling of it. And then you can just, if you're in doubt, you can stop and look just detailed, which is which, and then you will get the right answer <laughs> the more you do it. So um, uh, we're going to end this episode here. It's it's known to be one of the hardest things to, to, to get used to. So um, that's normal, but it's also something that everyone when they get the really the the technique here and the rules they do it right like always after that okay so we're gonna stop it here and as always thank you so much for listening and see you again soon <laughs>